Welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, AI Technical Founder, and today we will learn how to build a convolutional neural network from scratch with PyTorch. Now, PyTorch provides the elegantly designed modules and classes such as torch.nn, torch.optim, dataset, and data loader to help you create and train neural networks. In order to fully utilize their power and customize them for your problem, you need to really understand exactly what they're doing. To develop this understanding, we will first train basic neural net on the MNIST dataset without using any features from these modules. We will initially only use the most basic PyTorch tensor functionality. Then we will incrementally add one feature from Torch NN, Optim, dataset, data loader at a time, showing exactly what each piece does and how it works to make the code either more concise or more flexible. So here we're assuming that you have PyTorch installed and that you are familiar with the basics of tensor operations. So here the first step is to download the MNIST dataset. So we have a URL here and we're going to create a path, make a, make a directory, and we're going to download the a zip file with, with this data from, from this URL. So we're going to import requests and import a path from, from, from pathlib here. So we, we create, a, create a content variable here, request.get. So we're going to pass in the URL and the file name here, and then just gra just grab the content. So that's how that's our request to get our our zip our file here, our zip file. Now we're just going to write the content to our to our to our file here, to our to our to our, fi uh, our fi file name here. So in, in our folder that we created, in this new directory. So this data set is in NumPy array format and has been stored using a pickle. And pickle is a Python specific format for serializing and deserializing data. So here, once we have that, the next step is now, so we import pickle, we import gzip. So that's to unzip this file that, that, we, that we wrote to our, to our directory, to our, to our folder. So, and at, at any time during uh, here, you, you can feel free to pause and, and just think about what, what, what's going on at, at, at your own pace. So we grab our data here. Our, for, so we are going, going to open up our zip file with gzip, gzip.open. We pass in the path and the file name, read it. And then, so we have our training features and our training labels and the same for our validation uh, sets. So we'll, we'll do pickle.load and we, we just pass in this, this um, file that, that we open. So this is going to deserialize uh, the, our data and store it in these variables right here. So now let's actually go ahead and, and print the shape of, let's just grab the train here and uh, the features and the labels. So as you can see here, we have 50,000 training examples, 50,000 images, and then each one is of shape 784. So usually it's 28 by 28, but these are just uh, flattened uh, vectors essentially. So, so 784. And uh, so that's for the features. So the images of so 50,000 training examples and then 784 pixels pixel values and it's a numpy array the type and now for the labels it's just uh, 50,000 examples with just one value for the label for whatever it, it, the, that image corresponds to and it's also a numpy array array type so each image is 28 by 28 and as we said it's being stored as a flattened row of length 784 now let's actually go ahead and take a look here at one so we're just you know, using uh, PyPlot from Matplotlib and just image show. And we're going to grab the first example from the 50,000. So at the index zero, reshape it to 28 to 28. And just and we want just a gray, a gray uh, color here for, for our plot. And we, again, print the shape so we can see. So now it's been reshaped to 28 by 28, or 784. And that's uh, the number five. So that's the MNIST data set, one example. That's, that's, what it, um, that's what it looks like. That's what we're dealing with. And that's what we're going to, to train with. Now, PyTorch uses torch.tensor, you're probably aware. Uh, it's the, the most basic and, and fundamental uh, objects in, in deep learning and here in, in PyTorch, so the, a tensor. So now, because we have a, our type is NumPy array, we need to convert them to tensors. So here we're going to import torch, of course. And as we said, we're going to be importing each module as we need it. So you see exactly what's going on and see why we need it. So we have um, our 
our variables here that we had before, but now we're going to do, use the built-in Python function map, which is going to convert our NumPy arrays to a torch.tensor. So the first parameter is a torch.tensor, what we want to convert it to, and then for the second parameter here, we have our value. So we're just going to convert those uh, NumPy arrays to torch uh, tensors here. So we're going to print to print them again, and now as you see, it's tensors. Now it's not, no longer a NumPy array; it's a PyTorch tensor. And as you see, zeros at, um, like at the beginning and at the end. The reason is because uh, the the dark pixels, right? That those correspond to to, to zeros, those black pic pixels. So from the beginning at the end uh, makes sense. So we have our all of our fifty thousand examples here, and then we have also our why try our, our labels here and as you can see again it's a PyTorch tensor but now we have just the actual values and for the first one that we printed it makes sense right it's a five and the actual label it's it's a five so again so now the the size essentially the shape is the same but now instead of being a numpy array it's a PyTorch tensor and and we printed that so now if we actually print the minimum and maximum values sort of the labels tensor we get zero and nine, which corresponds to our uh, to our digits, our MNIST data set digits, which range uh, from zero to nine. Those are the digits in the data. So that's nice. So now the next step is to create our neural network from scratch. So we're not going to use torch.nn yet for this for this first part. So we're going to create our model just using PyTorch tensor operations. Now, PyTorch provides methods to create random or zero fill tensors, which we will use to create our weights and bias for a simple linear model. So these are just regular tensors, but with one very special addition. I love this about PyTorch. So we tell PyTorch that they require a gradient. So this causes PyTorch to record all of the operations done on the tensor on the computational graph so that, so that it can calculate the gradient during backpropagation automatically. So PyTorch is, is beautiful how, 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 that, how it does that and it's very, very nice. So now here, the first, so, so we're going to import uh, math because we're going to be using some, some math here. And first we're going to create our, our weights tensor. So we're going to say torch.rand and so we're going to, to create a random uh, t tensor here with, with with random values, but we give it a shape. So we want a, a shape of 784 and 10. Why? So we only have one one layer here, and we want the the uh, well. Essentially, we only have the input and then the output and the weights tensor connecting it. It's a rank two tensor. So we have a 784 as an as an input, and then uh, come, so that's for the for the first layer for the input layer, and then for the output it's 10, like zero to nine, like the the actual classification what it actually is so that's just so super simple it's really just the input layer 784 leading up to the output which which is 10. Uh, so that's that's why we want this shape this is the weights tensor that we want connecting and in this case since it's a tensor of rank 2 it's a matrix here and we uh we also want to divide by the square root of um by uh divide by square root of 784 this is called xavier initialization and this is to make training easier, faster, and more stable. Uh, so, I mean, for, for more information on, on this, on weight initialization and Xavier initialization, uh, check out the, the video uh, by Deep Lizard on weight initialization where they describe very nicely why, why this is important and why we would want it. So here, so we initialize the, uh, our weights tensor here. And then now we, for the weights, we said require scrad here, this, after the initialization since we don't want that step to be included in the in, in, in the gradient. So we so we're, we're going to say requires a gradient. And this uh, trailing this uh, uh, character here means uh, that the operation is performed in place. So we're just basically saying that this requires a gradient and 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 it does, right? Because we're going to take a we're going to ca calculate the partial derivatives of our loss function with respect to these weights. So it requires a gradient, right? So then we, we initialize our bias bias uh, tensor and it's just a, a, a ten, uh, just we, we just want torch dot zero so just we're going to initialize to zeros and also say that it that requires a gradient equals uh, is true. Now this is just this is just a, ten, a tensor of rank one right right here. So the or or a vector in, in other in other words. So once we once we have that. Then, so now PyTorch's ability to calculate gradients automatically is very nice. Now we can use any standard, because we said requires grad gradient on those tensors. Now we can use standard Python functions uh, for, our, for, for, 
for example, our loss function, for our activation function, or even for our model. Like we could just use plain Py uh, Python to create our, our function. So PyTorch is very Pythonic, it's very nice. So we can just build anything we want really by hand. But of course, uh, PyTorch is providing a lot of pre-written loss functions, activation functions, and so on, but you can easily write your own. And so PyTorch will even create fast GPU or vectorized CPU code for your function automatically. So very nice and very convenient. So here, because we're building it from scratch, we're going to define our log softmax because this is a, a classification uh, task here, MNIST data set. And we just define it by, by hand here. Feel free to pause and, th and just look at how it's, how it's done. And now for our model, it's just a very simple model here. We're going to do a dot product of our input with the weights of, of these tensors here, of these, of these, of these, vector, and then we're going of these tensors, and then we're going to add the bias. So just very, very, very simple, just a linear model, and then we're going to pass that and pass that into our output activation function. So that is our model. It's a very simple, just it's a linear uh, function passed in into our log softmax that produces our our output. And again, just very simple Python. So now here now. Uh, so this add actually stands for the dot product operation. Now we will call our function on one batch of data. In this case, we're going to use a batch size of 64, so 64 images, and do one forward pass. So here we have our batch size, and we're going from our train uh, data. We're going to grab from index it, right? So from zero to the bat to our batch size from zero to 64. So that's a, a what we call a mini batch here, from uh, x. Now so we have so for our predictions, we're going to call our model and we're just going to pass in our our input here our our, our batch and is going to calculate uh, our our output here our our predictions and now we're we're actually going to go ahead and print out our predictions as zero so for for one of the examples and the, and the shape so so we have here our just it's it's a tensor type the tensor type and as you can see we have a gradient function so the predictions tensor, the Pred's tensor, contains not only the tensor values, but also this gradient function. And we will use this later to do back propagation. And then we're also printing the shape. And as you can see, it's 64 for our batch size and then 10 uh, corresponding to 0 to 9, whatever the classification uh, is. Uh, and, and during training, uh, this, this will get better and better and closer to, the, to, to what it should be, to the actual values. So, because again, these, these are weights were initialized are, are randomly and there hasn't been trained at this point. Now for our loss function, because we're doing log softmax for the output, we're going to implement negative log likelihood to use as our log function. And we're just going to use standard Python. And we have NL a loss uh, for in our built-in in PyTorch, but here just to see how it's working, you can just do it yourself using plain PyTorch, Python. So it's very, very nice. So we have our, define our loss function that takes in our the the output basically and then our target so the actual labels that it should have given is going to compare those two to calculate the loss so now we can check what, uh, our loss with a random uh, model so we have a we can look at relatively high loss here 2.3955 with this gradient function and we're going to see uh, with back propagation how that loss improves so we're going to implement a, a function here to calculate the accuracy of our model. So for each prediction, if the index with the largest value matches the target value, then the prediction was correct. So for our tensor, we, we grab the arg max, so the maximum, uh, the, the highest value here for, for our input here, which is the output from the forward pass. And then we don't want the first dimension, like the batch, the example kind of dimension. We want the, the first dim the dimension equals to one, which corresponds to the actual uh, value, the actual classification value. And then we're just going to do this this check, make sure if they match, convert them to floats, and then just grab the grab the mean so we can return just the one value, the overall average accuracy for for all for all of it. So here we can check the accuracy of a ran of a random model, and then we'll see if it if that can actually improve. So pretty low accuracy. So now here our our the, the next step here is we're going to to run a a, tra a training loop. And actually, let's 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 go here to the next. We're going to run a training loop, and for for each iteration, we will select a mini batch uh, of data of size batch batch size of 64 that we said before. Use a model to make predictions, calculate the loss, and th then do loss dot backward, which updates the its back propagation, updates the gradients of the model. In this case, our our weights and bias tensors that we that we created before. So. We're going to use these gradients to update the weights and the bias. 
So we, we, we do this within the torch.no grad context manager because we do not want these actions to be recorded for our next calculation of the gradient. And uh, you can read more about that in PyTorch Autograd, how uh, PyTorch Autograd records uh, operations, but we just want this context manager. Uh, so we don't want those to, the actual updates here to be recorded. We want, uh, so we then set the gradients to, to zero. We zero out the, the, the gradient so that we are ready for the next loop. I mean, if we don't do this, our gradients would record uh, a running tally of all the operations that had happened and adds the gradients to whatever is already stored rather than then replacing them. But so we want to zero out so we can just have clean gradients uh, and, and each each time around. So, and you can use uh, a standard uh, standard Python uh, debugger to debug debug through your PyTorch uh, code and check the the values of your variables uh, at each step. Uh, so. Here we start, uh, we pick uh, two hyperparameters, our learning rate and our epochs. Epochs is how many times we're gonna run through all of the data. So we have 0 0.5 just for our learning rate, uh, two epochs, just keeping it simple. And now very standard as we've, uh, we've seen before, so for epoch in the range of epochs, and then we're going to run uh, through, our, through, through our batches here. So we're going to have a start index and an end index. And we're, depending on, on where we are here, we're going to grab that value. So we start at zero, so we're going to grab uh, Zero, 0 times the batch size, so 0, and then the end index is, is the, this one, so 0 times plus the batch size, so grab from 0 to, to 64. Then the next one will be from 64 to 128, and then from 120, and so on. So that's how we're going to be indexing here our our our, our data and, gra and grabbing our, value, our values for each. So again, this is just very manual, done from scratch without using all of the nice data loaders, and, but we will, we will do that later. Here we're just showing that we can do this completely from scratch so you see how, how it's working, how PyTorch uh, does things. So we have that and now we're just going to pass it into our model, into our linear model, which is going to give us an output, which is our predictions. And then we're going to calculate our loss. And this is for, for a single batch and we're going to run through all the batches. So we calculate the loss, we pass it into our loss onto our loss function, and then we call loss.backwards to so do back propagation here. And now we are going to, once that we have uh, those, we're going to update our our weights on our bias with the, with the, with the values of the gradients here. So again, we want to do torch.nograd, so those are not recorded, and then uh, in the computational graph. So now we're going to to just update them in a very standard way. So here. We're going to uh, subtract equal uh, assigns and weights dot grad times the learning rate. So it's very simple here. So the way we do it is the gra the gradient times the learning rate that and we we subtract that from the weights. That's how we actually do the the update and same with 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 the bias, and then we zero out the gradient. So we so we have a fresh gradient at zero uh, for for our next uh, iteration. So for 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 the for the next step here, so that's how we're going to to do it, and then we're going to run through our epochs. So so that's it. We created a minimal neural network here. And in this case, it's logistic regression because we don't have hidden layers. So it's all from scratch. Now we're going to check the loss and the accuracy and compare to the ones that we got earlier. And we expect the loss to have decreased. So before we had 2.5 something. So now, so our loss has definitely decreased and see, we can see our, our gradient function as well. And then our accuracy was was kind of close to zero, but now it's, 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 it's higher. So it's definitely... Uh, it's definitely working. Training, training is done, and now in the in, in the next tutorials, we're going now to replace with our mod with our modules like an end dot uh, uh, functional optim and 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 so on. But now you have learned how to implement a basic linear model uh, and and train it using PyTorch and and just basic built-in Python fu uh, functions. So it's very nice. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, comment below, and I will see you in the next tutorial where we will now start uh, replacing uh, our manual code and using the, the beautiful built-in uh, modules and convenience methods from PyTorch.